performer has been headlining at the Magic Castle since he was 17 years old. He's an amazing mentalist who Bruno Mars recently said, get out of my house, <laughs> as a compliment. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, David Stryker! Yet, but I deserve that. How's everybody, how's everybody doing? Yeah. Thanks for coming out in the heat. Everybody feeling good? Yeah. My name is David. I, I like to think of myself as an impressionist. I do an impression of what a lot of people would call a mentalist or a mind reader. And from experience, about half of you are going to lean right in, into this. You're going to go, this is the world I dance around in. I get this. This is my play space. The other half of you are already thinking, I don't believe any of this. And it doesn't matter which camp you're in. You're here, I'm here and we're going to see what happens. Everybody ready? Yeah. Right. I'm going to toss this item here. It's a crumpled paper ball somewhere into the audience. Thank you, Ethan. Somebody catch it. Don't punch an eye. Somebody get it? Yeah. What is your name, please? Carla. Carla, if I was pretty accurate with that thing, I could have thrown it to you roughly. I want you to hand it to either the person to your right or left, please. Mm. <laughs> does everybody know this guy already, too? What's it? Yeah? What's your name, please? David. David, have you been used earlier in the show? No. Okay, perfect. David, I want you to think of a number in your head, please, between 1 and 100. We have not set anything up, and I want this number to be arbitrary to your life. So, like, not your mom's birthday, not your sports number from high school, something that feels to this moment to be random. Do you have a number in your head, David? I do. Stand up, please. Send me this number in whatever way that means to you. Yeah, stand up. Don't say the number. Focus on it. Now, my chicken scratch is not amazing, David, but it's going to get us there. This is written in Sharpie. I'm committed to something in front of all of you. David, for the first time, please, what number are you thinking of? You can say it. 89. 89. Did anyone in the audience also think of 89 or a number very close to it? No. Over here? Nobody? No. Why 89, David? No reason. No reason. I got very close. I wrote down, David, that you will think of 91. Whoa. Which out of 100 is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. This wasn't about me getting it right. This was about us ending in the right place together. Awesome. You thought of 89. I went with 91. I was off by two. David, would you throw me the paper ball, please? Yes, I would. Have you ever felt like sometimes life does those little things that like almost conspire to do something really, really cool for you? David, this is... This is one of those times. Any questions? Yeah. I'd like to. As a mentalist, I think a lot about thoughts. It's kind of what I do. It's kind of a weird thing to think about, but. Ultimately, our thoughts have a lot of influence over us. If we think of happy things, we feel good. If we think of negative things, whether we know it or not, it can kind of bring us down. Yeah, our thoughts lead to how we feel. We all kind of agree with that? Yeah. We need somebody's help over here. Let's see. They're, this whole family's avoiding eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name just here? Bill. Bill, would you mind helping? Yeah. Would that be okay? Did, yeah, did he already get chosen yeah. as well? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about, you, how about you guys? Are you guys magicians over here? Ish, they're dabblers. He's going, yeah, I don't know what you call that. What's your name? Miranda. Miranda, would you help me? You can stay where you're out for now. Everyone, a little round of applause. Can you help me? Sure. What's your name, please? Owen. And Owen. And Miranda and Owen. Um, Owen. Are you, a, are you a Donald Trump fan? Uh, no. Okay. Me neither. I want you to think, think of someone in your own life that you care about a lot and that likes them. Okay? So this little slip of paper says, somebody I love that's a little crap. Like that, okay? In a moment, you're going to, only first name, we don't want to embarrass them too much. Um, you're going to write this person's first name across the line, and when you're done, fold the, up this little slip into quarters, okay? Make sense? Just first name. I can't see through this. I'll leave this there. You can come get it in just a moment. Miranda, I want you to think of any city in the United States, any city in America. Can you think of somewhere? It could be near or far away. Just somewhere in your head. You're going to write this down on the line, and when you're done, fold up this little slip 
in the quarters. I cannot see through them. I'll leave you a pen. I'll leave you a pen. Come and get it. And if I happen to look towards you while you're writing, be really paranoid. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's kind of the key to this. And let me know when they're folded up. While the two of them are doing this, oop, I don't want to see anything, Miranda. Be paranoid. Cover it with your hand. Make sure there's nobody looking. I want to introduce you to this. We're going to get back to this in a moment. This is something that I made during COVID. I got really bored because I wasn't performing. There were no shows to do. And I started putting Rubik's Cubes in bottles. And there's a few things, I know it's a, very, it's a very strange thing to do. I spent a lot of time doing this. I'm going to leave this here for just a moment. You can come grab your, your little slip, Miranda. Greg, come grab yours. I'd like both of you to join me on stage. Give them some love. Thank you so much. We have not met before this moment. Is that correct? Yes. Excellent. Hold up your little slip for me. Make sure it's folded into quarters. They look about the same. Hand yours to Miranda, please. Miranda, put them both behind your back and mix them up so that not even you are sure which is which. In a moment, Miranda, I'm going to ask you to very instinctually hand one of them to me. Whichever one you hand me, we're going to eliminate, and we'll focus on the other one. Everybody with me? Yeah. Very instinctually. Just hand one to me. Perfect. And you can bring out the other one and hold it in a fist all the way out in front of you, all the, all the way toward me like this. This is a person which would make it your thought. This is somebody you see a lot? Not too much. Focus on the first letter. Don't say it out loud. Visualize it here. Is it a W? OK, so it's an M? Yeah. Don't say it out loud. I want you to count the number of letters in this person's name, but do not say that number out loud. Let me know when you have it. So this is a longer name. <laughs> Even smarter people at five, six letters start doing this. I'm guessing, and you, you just now got it. You thought it was like six, and you added a letter. Is it seven? It is. It is. We did not set anything up. Would you hold that both of your hands like a little table, please? Random man. When was the last time you saw him? Michael? Would you show them, please? Come on. Miranda, are you still thinking of a place? OK. Have you been to this place before? Yes. Because this is sort of a fundraiser for the election, if, if you think that this city is going to kind of lean toward Joe Biden, and when you think of the color blue, if you think a city is most likely to kind of lean toward Trump, think of orange. <laughs> so think of one of those two colors. Do you have one? Are you thinking of one? Okay, I'm already getting something pleasant, like the sky. So this is like blue. This is gonna. This is sort of a, a liberal city, let's call it. Can you call it that? Yeah? We did not set anything up ahead of time, correct? Are you only thinking of one place? Because I'm getting two things. So I'm getting two words. Does that ring true? Yes. Miranda, thank you so much for coming. In a clear voice, so that they can all hear you, Miranda, where are you thinking of? San Francisco. Thank you very much. Give it up for Miranda and George. And oh, and everybody, thank you guys. Can I find one more? Thank you. Thank you very much for your time and your attention. Ah, you know what? I brought one that we can play with. I'm going to give this to... What is your name, please? Jonathan. Hey, Jonathan, I'm going to toss this to you. Do your best to catch it. You got it? It's kind of dark. Jonathan, give it a few twists. And uh, don't try to solve it. And then pass it this way. We're going to see if we can get 10, 15 people to get their hands on it over the next 60 seconds. And if I can give you a really brief history lesson. The, the Rubik's Cube was invented in 1976 by a guy named... Rubik. Good. Very good. <laughs> um, and Rubik was not a puzzle designer. He was an architect. And he was specifically trying to create something that he was going to use to sort of communicate design concepts to his students. It wasn't about the puzzle. And there were two things that he didn't know the day that he invented it. He didn't know it would become the best-selling toy of all time by long shot. And he didn't know how to solve it, which is to me the cool, wow. which is, to me, the cool part, right? It's, it's sort of thought of as something that very smart people can do, and virtually no one can do it. But the guy who invented it, he couldn't solve it. I don't know, call me crazy, a little inspiring. Um, let's see, you have the cube there. What is your name, please? Uh, 
Debbie. Debbie, are you satisfied with the way the cube is now, or do you want to give it one more twist? One more twist. Oh, she's doing one more. Do it, Debbie. <laughs> Would you stand up and thank you? I'll take that from you. Big round of applause for Debbie. Woo! Pretty good. Now, the Rubik's Cube has there's a lot of different combinations on it. It's 43 quintillion. That's how many different ways you can configure it. And the world record for solving it is like five seconds. Some kid somewhere, you know. I'm going to do it in the darkness of the bag as fast as I can. Would you count me down, please, from five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. <laughs> if you'll humor me, I think I fell in love with this thing when I was 13, and I think the reason that is is it's kind of analogous to life a bit. It's colorful, it's messy. The more you seem to kind of grind at it and try to get it to line up, the more it just messes itself up. But it is colorful and it is interesting. And wouldn't it be great if tomorrow was the day your alarm went off, and tomorrow was the day you didn't feel the need to grind? to get all your pieces in the right place. Wouldn't that be a good day?